Greetings sailors, welcome back to World of Warships, and today I have a viewer replay for you courtesy of Crazy5982, and I could swear I've had a replay of his on the channel before, but I'm not sure. I had a quick search and I couldn't find one, but the name is just familiar. It would be a World of Tanks game, and it must have been a while ago if it was the case, but maybe I'm just completely making that up, I don't know. Anyway, he is in the Tier 3 Russian destroyer, the Derpsky, as it's rapidly become known, because, well, it's basically the shotgunniest of the shotgun destroyers. It has 3km torps, but it has 10 of them uh, in 5 twin launchers, and it can put those uh, 10 torpedoes in the water every 22 seconds. You can absolutely hose down an area with these torps but only within a three kilometer radius. So in order to use the torps, in order to absolutely devastate somebody, you have to get really up close and personal. And at tier three, actually, that's more viable than it would be at higher tiers. At tier three, there's a lot more inexperienced players running around. Uh, uh, trying to do this in a tier six or a tier seven destroyer would just get you killed very, very quickly more often than not. Whereas in, at tier three, you can kind of get away with more things. Now you'll notice that like the, uh, the supporter replay the other day, um, there are no shell tracers in this replay. I don't know why that is. One of the 5.1 micro patches, and we're up to, as of recording, 5.1.4. Uh, for some reason, for the slightly older 5.1 games, it has removed this sh the shell tracers from the replay. So in all other respects, the replays play fine. It's just, I don't know. Anyway, we'll just have to live with it, I suppose. So he's had a first blood and a devastating strike on that Clemson, and he's actually about to get another torp hit on the enemy Derpski that was uh, trying to cap this B area. Now the guy actually seems to be flooding, and although uh, uh, Crazy isn't going to get the kill, he is going to at least get a little bit more damage out of this. The guns, I have to say, on this aren't totally terrible, but the low-tier uh, Russian and Soviet destroyers are all pretty crippled by uh, turret turn time. They are really bad. As bad, if not worse, than the uh, Russian, uh, not Russian, wow, the Japanese destroyers. So to use the guns, you have to commit to sailing in a, a straight line, and that's often not a great idea in a destroyer. So it makes the early tiers a bit awkward, uh, I have to say. And in fact, the high point of the early tiers in terms of torpedo range is actually the tier 4, which has... I, I can't even remember now, is it 5km torps? I mean, it's still pretty close range, but not totally terrible. Uh, it's kind of, that, that puts it in a similar position to the uh, American destroyers. But then you get to the tier 5 to tier 7, and they have 4km torps, so actually lose range. So you go back to being a, a shotgun destroyer again. And in fact, they're not even really about being shotgun destroyers. I mean, the torpedoes are kind of last ditch at, at those kind of tiers. Uh, more often than not, they are uh, about doing damage with the, the guns. Whereas this, well, you can do things like this. This is a pair of uh, uh, ships in very close proximity. The other Derpski on his team takes care of the Karlsruhe, and he's about to really, really lay some hurt into that uh, Kawachi. Yes, he just wrecked that guy. That was, what, 40,000 damage all in one go? Just about? That was, yeah, devastating. Each of these torpedoes can do uh, a maximum of, uh, it's about 6,200 damage. So multiple hits racks up very quickly. The individual torps don't do that much, but if somebody's up close enough to spray the torpedoes at you, yeah, you're not just going to get hit by one unless you're very, very lucky. Now he tries to ninja a kill with his guns on that low health battleship, but doesn't get it, unfortunately. There's also uh, a Wyoming and a Temryu that are rather healthier to his east. But, well, for some reason... I mean, he opens up fire here and he's probably spotted anyway. The detection range on the Russian and Soviet destroyers isn't great. But he concentrates his uh, attention on the Tenryu, and the Tenryu is a very dangerous target. And I think Crazy must have known exactly what he was getting into at this point, because the Tenryu knows he's here. And the Tenryu is a very nice little ship. It's the Tier 3, I want to say. Yeah, the Tier 3 Japanese uh, cruiser. 
It's got pretty fast firing guns. I mean, it's a, a light cruiser, so no armor to speak of, but it's relatively fast. It's got um, reasonably okay torpedoes. All in all, it's a, a fairly nice all-rounder. So what Crazy is doing right now when they're both having full knowledge that the other will be there is just very, very risky indeed, but it's kind of equally risky for this Tenryu. Now the Tenry has put Torps out, unsurprisingly, and this is going to be tight, this is going to be tight. He's also opened fire at uh, Crazy, and Crazy's just lost a big chunk of health. And there's more incoming shots, oh, critical engine damage, but his torpedoes are out, and there's two hits. And that was a pretty uh, hefty hit, and there we go, finishes him off with another three. So, that was another devastating strike. Now, unfortunately, Crazy is not burning. However, his engine's down and his uh, cooldown, uh, his repair's on cooldown, so he has to wait a little while before he can get moving again. He was being spotted by one of the Langley's fighter groups, but uh, for some reason the Langley pulls his fighters back, so Crazy is at least, uh, although he's really quite wounded now, uh, in a relatively safe position. The Wyoming to the south and that Ishizushi to the north are both well within uh, range to shoot him. But they're, well, the Wyoming is dealing with other things right now. You know, uh, I think Crazy maybe thought about going after the Wyoming, but there's so many allies down there that it would have been a waste of time. And the Ishizushi to the north has obviously been playing really rather very passively. So, I mean, as long as Crazy isn't spotted, he's probably got a decent chance of at least not getting killed by this guy. Although... Having said that, his chances of getting up close to do damage himself are probably quite minimal because there's enemy planes going overhead. One of those Langleys has been spotted already and possibly the other one's still there. Now it looks like they just spawned in and didn't even bother hitting the W key. And it did look at various points like uh, they were trying to deliberately keep Crazy lit up with their planes. but. They weren't doing it on a very consistent basis, so I'm not sure if it was deliberate or not, or if it was just unintentional. But either way, I mean, there's enough air groups at the moment in the air that uh, he really does have to worry about being spotted. And there we go. And this Ishizushi does look like he's got turrets pointed in his direction. And there we go. Shots out, as we can see from the flashes, but none of them hit, clearly. You don't even see the splashes in the water with the, this particular replay dirt. I don't know, it's a bit... It's a bit weird. Everybody has invisible shells for some reason. So he's, he's managed to get away. I mean, that guy's going to be now reloading his guns. Uh, Crazy can get behind the island and at least have a bit of cover and have time to either shoot these Langleys or uh, get into torpedo range. And I'm not quite sure why he chose to not use his guns. I mean, he does put a, a few shots out here against Ishizushi, but when he could have equally turned his guns on the Langleys and set them on fire, prevented them getting more planes in the air. I don't know, it probably would have been a, a better use of his firepower at this particular uh, juncture of the battle. Because they're basically one now, it's the Ishizushi, there's, what is it, a, a cruiser left around somewhere, uh, Kohlberg, there we go, and these two Langleys. So it just remains for him to, uh, you know, gobble up these hit points. He's by far the closest person to, to uh, uh, these uh, carriers. So his chances of taking these carriers hit points and carriers in this game, con in contrast to artillery and water tanks, actually have a relatively large amount of health. So it's, oh, look at that, look at that, look at that. Oh, another high, ca another high caliber, another devastating strike and a high caliber. So yeah, going after uh, carriers is quite profitable in a destroyer. There's a lot of uh, hit points to gobble up and if you can get torpedoes out like that then yeah. Now he actually took a hit from that Langley. Uh, the Langley I think it depends on the hull configuration. Maybe it doesn't. Actually I don't even think you have an upgrade for the Langley's hull. Um, it actually has a defensive gun and it's pretty terrible but uh, oh and he's taking a hit from that Langley. If you get close enough and you have to get close enough in a derp ski it can still do a bit of damage to a destroyer especially if you're low health. So that killed him but he got all of his torpedoes out and well they've just about won on points but if you can milk uh, another big chunk of uh, damage out of this game and there we go confederate it's just a flesh wound and a devastating strike just before the end so that was a very nice way to end that battle.
if he'd had this game in time for my replays contest, this might have been a winner. That was nine medals. That was ridiculous. Five devastating strikes and four others. So there we go. There's the uh, the team scores. 1883 base XP with five kills. Well, we can already tell how much torpedo damage roughly he did if you were paying attention to the damage counter. Um, but there we can see he also had a little bit of damage on top of that from uh, uh, HE, AP and uh, flooding. But the eye-watering figure there is 135, nearly 136,000 torpedo damage. 29 torpedo hits in a tier 3 destroyer in a tier 4 game. So that was crazily good. And... With a standard account, he made 160,000 credits profit in a tier 3 machine. You'd never get that kind of profit level in World of Tanks. You just wouldn't. You couldn't do that kind of thing in World of Tanks. You just couldn't devastate uh, a group of enemies in that way. So, yeah, the Derpski, it's a one-trick pony, but if you get to use that trick, oh my, oh my, what you can do. Oh, yes. So, if you've enjoyed this uh action-packed, torpedo-filled replay, you can uh, hit the like button, you can leave any comments below, you can hit the subscribe button, and as always, stay tuned for more.